not a wasted vote. What is a wasted vote? If you vote as per the directions given by the Australian Electoral Commission, you are wasting your vote unless 1. You know for certain how the person you vote for will vote on all the known issues that are of concern to you. 2. The person you vote for contacts you and asks you your opinion on the issues you previously did not know about. 3. You accept that as the person you vote for represents all those in their electorate, it is impossible for that person to vote on any one issue the way you want them to. And four, you know if the person you vote for is a member of a political party, whether they vote on party lines or what they have told you how they will vote on a particular issue. And five... No leeway, no compromise, just... You want compromise? How's this? 20 years in the can. I wanted Manicot. I compromised. I ate grilled cheese off the radiator instead. Five, lastly, you are willing to compromise on multiple issues. For example, one candidate could be promising to reduce taxes by reducing spending with another promising to increase spending on health and education. But you want taxes to be decreased, but want less spent on defence and more spent on health and education. Your decision has to be a compromise. You want compromise? I compromised. But I compromised. You see where I'm going? Yeah. Why is this so? that it is a wasted vote in these situations. Because in Australia, since 1901, we've had a political system that's called representative democracy. In a representative democracy, the people do not get to decide on particular issues. Instead, the people have to vote for a representative that then votes on the particular issues on their behalf. Issues can be practically anything, like should children be given milk at school, how much is to be spent on defence? Whether Australia is involved in a war? What tax rates should be? And how much money is spent on particular items? And, of course, what laws there should be? And to a certain extent, how the political system operates, including the extent of your involvement. The elected representative votes in the House of Representatives, either for or against a motion, which is basically an issue. All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the noes have it. No. Ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. And why is this so? Because of the Australian Constitution. The Australian Constitution is a document that was drafted between 1891 and 1898 by people that are no longer alive. It was ratified on the 6th of June 1900 and became effective on the the 1st of January 1901, over 121 years ago. What did not exist in 1901? A couple of examples. Aircraft, mass ownership of motor cars, weapons of mass destruction, television, computers, the internet, an Australian population of about 26 million, and a world population of about 8 billion. You only have to read the initial Australian constitution to see how it is not appropriate for a modern society. What about changing it? The Australian constitution can and has been changed. It requires what is called a referendum. This is where you can vote on an issue, but only on issues involving the constitution itself. The problem in trying to change the Constitution. There are two major problems when trying to change the Constitution. The first is that it is generally only Parliament can put forward motions for changing the Constitution, not the people. Parliament means politicians. The second is that a motion to change the Constitution must be successful, for it to be successful. It has to have the majority of Australian electorate voting for it 
as well as the majority of electors in the majority of states. Because of this, of the 44 referendum issues, only four have been successful. An alternative to representative democracy. An alternative to representative democracy is direct democracy. This is basically what a referendum is, except any issue can be voted on, not just issues that deal with the Constitution. Voters vote for or against a particular issue. Only one other country in the world has something like a direct democracy. That is Switzerland. How can we change Australia to a direct democracy? Theoretically, it would be possible to change Australia to a direct democracy by having numerous referendums to change the multiple parts of the Constitution. The Parliament, that is the politicians, are not likely to allow that situation to happen such that it diminishes or eliminates their power and control. What gives the Australian Constitution authority? The Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act of 1900, a law in the United Kingdom, gave the Australian Constitution authority. But what gave that law authority to make the Australian Constitution? And what gave that the authority to make that? And so forth and so on. It's all about faith. The only thing that gives law authority is aggregate faith of the populace. That is, the majority of people have faith in laws. As an example, if a ridiculous law was made, like everybody had to report to a police station every day, because the majority of people will not have faith in such a law, it would not be enforceable and so be ineffectual. There are many many things that people are unhappy about with government because they have lost faith in it. So, what has all this to do with wasted votes? As I said earlier, voting the required way is actually a wasted vote based on the previous criteria. But if you vote informal, it is not a wasted vote because you're doing so you are basically saying that the current political system is not working and you wish it to be changed. This can be done by voting informal. Voting informal is actually a horrible word for describing that you may wish to vote on the issues yourself and that you don't want someone else to represent you. Voting informal means that you haven't voted according to the rules for voting as directed by the Parliament, that is, those that are supposed to represent you. It is the Parliament that has made the laws about and what and who decides if a vote is informal or not. An example of informal voting could be drawing an additional box on the voting paper with your name against it, putting the number one in that box without putting anything else against anyone else's name, or even putting other ascending numbers against the other candidates. I'm not sure if that, that last version is an informal vote. I'll discuss that a bit later. While putting your own name on the voting paper, you're voting for yourself, saying you don't want anybody else to represent you, that you wish to make decisions yourself. Of course, there are many other ways of voting informal. Are informal votes counted? Yes, all informal votes are counted. To account for all the voting papers and calculate the informality rate, informal votes are counted and shown on the result of each election. Quote from the Australian Electoral Commission. Informal votes are not counted in the election of a candidate. Notice the word candidate. Informality rate, proportion of ballot papers not marked according to the rules of the election and therefore cannot be counted towards the election. 
The reason that a voting paper is declared informal is not recorded, just as the reason from a formal vote against a particular candidate is not recorded. The proof that informal votes are counted is shown in the statistics of every election since at least 1925. As it turns out, the Australian Electoral Commission published their own study on the analysis of, of informal votes. Because there is no requirement of voters to say if they are deliberately voting informal, it's not fully known how many informal votes are deliberate or mistakes. Perhaps that's a good reason to indicate on your voting paper. The effect of informal votes. A study of informal votes was done that showed that between 2004 and 2016, 32% of electorates reported more informal votes than votes for the margin between the winner and the runner-up. Considering that in recent elections a party could be in or out of power by a margin of only a few seats, this could indicate that informal votes are not a wasted vote, but are an indication of the people's true desire for direct democracy. As the Australian Electoral Commission study that I mentioned before attempted to make a, dis a distinction between informal votes that could have been a mistake and those that appear to be on the that the voter did wish to vote did not wish to vote, sorry, for any candidates. If you do make a deliberate informal vote, it could be worthwhile writing the reason you vote informal on the voting paper. Support for direct democracy. A Google search will show you a number of articles showing popular support for direct democracy, as well as the pros and cons for it. Lock the door. Australia already had a form of it. As there are fewer than Australia five had a members on the side of the nose in, in 2017. I declare the question resolved in the affirmative. In a... So, if you know for certain how the person you vote for will vote on all of the known and future issues, you accept that it's impossible for that person to please everybody, but may please the party before you, and you're willing to compromise. No, compromised. Well, compromise. Compromised. Then vote the way they have told you to vote, but otherwise vote informal with your written reasons, because it will not be a wasted vote. You see where I'm going? Yeah.